Hey guys, Dean here again. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install RL Craft and get the mod pack working. So I'm going to be going through the two main methods on how you can install RL Craft and get everything set up. Now this will work in the exact same way and the same fashion to how you install all other Minecraft mod packs. So if you've been watching my YouTube channel for a very long time and you've been watching all my top 10 mod packs videos, but you don't actually know where to get started and how to actually play any of them, then this video is of course going to be very valuable to you. There's two different methods which I personally use. I'm going to show the main method which is using Curse Forge and also show you the launcher which I personally use to install mods on too. Now I'd recommend to use Curse Forge first of all because anything which is hosted on Curse Forge, so all of the mod packs like RL Craft which people post on Curse Forge can be directly downloaded through their client. Now if you use a different launcher it can become tricky in some certain circumstances because some mod creators list their mods as not available on other platforms so that means when you use a different launcher it has to use a few different techniques to download those mods individually and it can sometimes break the mod packs. So I'd recommend first of all using Curse Forge. It just makes things a lot easier because everything's already hosted on their website anyway. First of all, you want to go ahead and download Curse Forge. This is an app which you can use to manage your add-ons in certain games, but specifically for Minecraft, we're going to be using Minecraft mods. And Curse Forge works for both Windows, Mac and also Linux, which not as many people of course use. Now the Curse Forge app is actually a pretty quick small lightweight app which is quite powerful and the good thing about using curse forge as the main method is it keeps all of your mods in your mod packs updated so if the mod pack author issues a new update and the mod pack comes to a brand new version then they're going to obviously auto update it inside curse forge without you having to go to any lens to update the mod pack manually so for that reason curse forge is always going to be your best bet so what you want to do is you want to go ahead and download curse forge and you want to download the installer install into your downloads folder and open up the installer and we can install the curse forge app now i already have installed but the installer will take you step by step and i'll show you all of the individual instructions on how you can actually get it working now curse forge uses a software which is called overwolf now overwolf is kind of like the framework which curse forge actually she works upon to get curse forge to work after you've installed curse forge we can go ahead and windows and search for curse forge or follow any kind of desktop shortcut which it may have created and we can go ahead and we can open up curse forge which will load and now you can see we're now in curse forge and this is the update screen it will show us the software's updates when we're first in curse forge we'll be greeted with a screen now you won't have any mod packs on the screen because I've already installed a series of them which I used to record my videos with. If you don't have any mod packs over here, then obviously your screen will not look like this. Now, the games are obviously displayed on the left hand side. So we have Minecraft, we have Minecraft Dungeons, and we have Stardew Valley. Now, these games may be different for you. They're basically based on the games you own and the games that you have installed already on your computer right now. And we can also click on the home page on Curse Forge, and this will give us a list of games. So these are based off games which I already own, but also many games which I don't own, which are just supported by Curse Forge's website. So all of these games have mod catalogs on Curse Forge. Now we want to go ahead and select Minecraft because that's the game we have. Okay. You can also configure things in the bottom left by clicking on this little settings button. This will take you into a settings window where we can customize quite a few features. Now on Minecraft specifically, we can change the settings. We can change the folder that our mod packs will be downloaded to on our computer, which is quite nice. I use a different hard drive to save more space on my main hard drive. We can also select the preferred release. So this will basically mean that when we install a mod pack, do we want it to download the latest release build? the recommended or latest build, or do we want it to download old beta or alpha builds? So just leave this on release. The game resolution, this is where you can select a custom resolution. So I could change this to 1920 by 1080 to fill my full monitor, but by default, it will be smaller so that you can maximize it, okay? Or you can press use desktop resolution to use the resolution or the size of your main screen on your PC. The launcher can also be closed when the game starts or it can be kept open. I just leave it as closed because it's a little bit annoying. And then the advanced section, this is where we can enable the forge debug log, which you're only gonna to wanna to use really if you want to investigate certain crashes and see what the culprit is. Now, allocated memory is very important, guys. This is why I'm covering this in the video. Allocated memory is going to basically allow you to assign more RAM to the game. 
because most of you guys who leave comments in a lot of my videos asking why the mod packs crashed or why it's lagging or running really slow that's because you haven't actually set more ram now this is dependent based on what your computer's ram is i think i have either 16 or 32 gigabytes i think i have 32 gigabytes but i'm not sure i might have 16 as you can see this only goes to 17 on this slider but usually at least eight gigabytes of ram seems to work best on most mod packs but a lot of mod packs nowadays especially those kitchen sink mod packs which have a ton of different mods they require even more memory guys so if your computer has 16 gigabytes of ram or above eight gigabytes then it's best just to turn this up i usually leave it on around 11 gigabytes i know it seems quite excessive but i have a lot of ram so i can get away with doing that but if you don't have much ram and you only have eight gigabytes which is still a decent amount you could turn this up and it usually might be on one gigabyte, which is a thousand MB. And you could turn this up to maybe four gigabytes or six gigabytes. And then your game will, for the most part, have more frame rate and lag less than it usually does. So I'd really recommend don't miss out on this or your mod packs may not be very fun to play. We can also change the Java version. So you can press select. This will open up a folder and then we find our Java version, but we have to do this manually. And this is arguments for things like the server or for the Java. So now we'll just press X because you know how to configure things. And if we were to find mod packs, we could go and browse mod packs over here and we can go through the catalog. We can also use the filters so we can sort by mod packs that are most popular. We can filter by the different categories. So I could just look for the most popular adventure and RPG mod packs. And look, RL Craft happens to be the top. We could also go down to game versions and we can select the specific game version which we want to install. Now, the game version we probably want to install is mod packs on the newest version, although there's not many that have been updated yet, but this is how I usually find mod packs to feature in my videos. Now, let's just go back, press all categories, sort by popularity, or sort by featured, and we'll see the most popular mod packs on this version. We'll go on all game versions, and the second most popular seems to be RL Craft. So we're going to use that as an example. RL Craft is the most popular mod pack. If I wanted to install RL Craft, there would be an install button for me to play this here. Now I've already installed it so I can launch RL Craft in this circumstance, but I'm going to show you me installing a different mod pack to show you how installing a pack works if you want to install RL Craft. On the mod packs page, we can see the version number. So this is 1.12.2. We can see the version of Forge that it uses, and we can see the date that it was last updated, as well as the number of downloads. A lot of people ask me in the comments on my videos, what version is this mod pack for? Well, this is how you figure out what version it's for because it shows on the mod page. Change log is obviously the previous updates. So if RL Craft, for an example, just got a new update, you could see what the authors have actually added. Old worlds are now compatible with a new build of the mod pack. Things like this. This is how you see what's been changed in new mods. And that's how I see what's been changed in mod packs. Screenshots is usually if you have any screenshots that you took in game in Minecraft, they will be displayed here. And you can also change your version. So if I wanted to play an older version of RL Craft, which I liked a little bit more, I could scroll down to versions and then press install on the version that I want. And you can also download the server pack if you want to host a server. So I press install and I could install an older version to play instead. The overview will just show us basically the Curse Forge mod pack page. Here we can view information. So it talks about certain launchers which we can use. It talks about that we need to download Optifine manually if we don't want this pack to crash or if we want to experience it in a better experience. And it shows us what the mod pack is and any information on quick startup on how to start playing. So there's useful information on the mods page. So what if I wanted to install RL Craft or just a random mod pack, right? Well, let's say I want to install the Pixel Mod mod pack because this is one of my favorite mod packs out there. So I just go ahead, press install, or I can select download server pack, or I can press this here and we can go to the mod packs website page. I can copy the mod pack link to share it, or I can just press install here too. Obviously, like I said before, if we go on versions, I could just install an older version directly through this method. I'm just gonna press install. So we're gonna go ahead and download the pixel mod mod pack right now. And you'll have to wait for the mod pack to actually download, and then it will show up in our mod packs list. So now if we click on my mod packs, you can see the mod pack we just downloaded is now in our list, which is our library, and it currently is in the progress of downloading. Let's say I just installed RL Craft. Now I could just press play and this would launch RL Craft and we can just play the mod pack we've downloaded, okay? It will pop up with a Minecraft launcher, the vanilla launcher here. That's normal. That's what it does to get everything working. And then now the only profile other than these other two defaults will be the mod pack profile. So we don't have to touch this. We just press play and now we can play RL Craft. So we just wait for it to load and we can get in game. And this is actually the same mod pack version that I used to record my RL Craft 100 Days video, which I released kind of like as an adventure series as a celebration for getting 100,000 subscribers. So you might actually see that my world 
is actually in this list. So I'm actually going to show you that. And now, as you can see, we have the RL Craft mod pack, which is opened on my other screen. So I'm just going to drag it on here. And we would just wait for the mod pack to load. And now we can play RL Craft. This has been changed a little bit since I last played because there's now this little dragon logo in the bottom right, which is pretty cool. And it also has the memory that we set in the Curse Forge launcher, which is the RAM that the game's going to use. And as you can see, it's not using much RAM at all in the loading phase. This is also why a lot of you guys crash when you're just loading the mod pack. The memory that's being used is higher than the total memory, which is the memory here that you've assigned in the Curse Forge launcher for the mod pack to use. So if the mod pack uses more memory than what your computer's assigned to it, then it's naturally going to crash. So that's why you can't skip over the settings step I showed you initially. Boom, now we have RL Craft open. So you can see we've installed a mod pack through the Curse Forge launcher. We can press on single player. I have my YouTube 100 days map over here and we could play that if I wanted to. But now I'll show you the second method, which is installing it through GD launcher. So if we wanted to install a mod pack through GD launcher, it'd be just as simple as doing it through this method. So we go to the GD launcher website. The reason I like this is because this is an open source launcher because you can see that the GitHub link is over here and it's a simple Minecraft launcher. So all you have to do is press download and download for windows this is a community project okay now you can follow the installer and when you follow the installer then this is what you'll see now you'll see over here it's a little bit overwhelming because i already have like 30 different profiles these are profiles based on content which i'm creating for my videos or that i have created for my videos and also a few things that you guys might not have yet seen that i'm not going to reveal for a while but what you would do is you'd press this little blue plus in the bottom left and from here we can install a few different things so we can install minecraft vanilla releases snapshots or beta and alpha builds we can install versions of forge or versions of fabric and fabric snapshots to create our own modded launcher profile which we could then create into a mod pack but we could also import a zip so we can import a mod pack we've already exported before or we can install mod packs through here now the reason i particularly like gd launcher is it also supports ftb mod packs so all the popular ftb packs like direwolf 20 stone block 2 and sky factory can all be installed through this launcher which is really nice but if we want to install curse forge packs such as rl craft we would just press download latest or we'd press explore versions and from here we could go and select all of the old versions of RL Craft. For an example I could download the 2018 build on a 1.11.2 which would be pretty exciting to actually see how that is so let's just go ahead and press download. Then we can give the launch profile a custom name or we can just press next to keep it by default. Then what I will go ahead and do is it'll go ahead and download the mod pack from CurseForge's servers and download it to your GD launch profile as well as install and forge manually and any other mods manually that it can't download from curse itself. So wait for this progress to finish and wait for it to download and install the mods and then we can launch it from the profile below. So now it says downloading mods 100% and you can see we have RL craft down here with a little bit of a picture. If we right click we can press manage, we can press open folder to go to the pack, we can export it so we can share it with our friends or we can repair it if there's any problems or if we've messed with it and broken it. Now if we press manage what we can do is we can actually modify this pack if we want to change it ourselves. So we could change the version of forge which I wouldn't recommend. We can also see how long we've played on the pack, when we last loaded it, the mod loader version of forge and we can also change the name of the profile we can change the resolution so we can click from the presets we can launch it in 1080p mode or 720 for an example 1280 and we could just put 720 we could also override the java memory which is the same thing i showed you earlier in curse forge this is where you assign how much ram you want the game to load with so i'm just going to select that 11 gigabyte sweet spot which i always seem to use the java arguments is where we can type in things manually over here this is the memory so we can change the memory which the game uses or the cpu memory manually in there which i wouldn't recommend touching if you don't understand it and we can also change the path of our java install if it doesn't work now under mods now we can actually see which mods were installed under rl craft in the mod pack from here if we want to add mods to RL Craft and customize the pack to make it a little bit easier to play or make it a little bit better, we could go ahead and it will show us mods for this specific version that supports the mod pack and we can download mods directly from Curse Forge. So I could add Iron Chest to RL Craft or I could add Immersive Engineering for an example or I could just go ahead and I could search and I could add mods like Just Enough Dimensions or Just Enough Biomes. I could add any mods to RL Craft to turn it into my own experience. Under mod pack, you can see with the version which we've installed, we can also change the version here just like we could before. Notes, we can leave notes. So I could put for a video, 100 days, something like that. Resource packs, 
We can add resource packs from our computer. We can view screenshots, which we take in game or open the folder. And then let's just press on play to launch our mod pack and it will start the instance. So now we are just starting up the RLCraft mod pack and you'll see that it's a little bit different since we've installed the very first version ever of RLCraft. So it's going to take a lot quicker time to load because it doesn't have as many mods and it's probably going to be guaranteed to be a lot different of a gameplay experience than the RLCraft you guys are used to. Boom. So now we've loaded and we can see the mod list and there's no custom loading screen on this version of RLCraft. Let's just make a world. Let's call it RLCraft. We'll turn sheets on and we'll put it in creative and let's actually spawn and see if there's any differences with this mod pack to what is usual. Okay, we've now dropped into the first ever version of RLCraft. So things look a bit weird. We have footsteps on the ground, which I don't seem to think are actually in the new version, although I might be wrong. When we go into the creative menu, we have crystal caves, food expansion, forgotten items, grapple hooks, which I think they eventually removed. Well, that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> we have potion core. We still have lycanites mobs though. That's quite nice to see that. We have switch bows. We still have cool structures in the sky though, like this sky tower or the sky castle. And we just have a few different mods, which aren't actually in the new version of RLCraft, although a lot of them still are like ice and fire. So this is the very early version of RLCraft when they were just starting to build it. And as you can see, we look like a pretty cool dragon slayer so that's going to conclude this video on how to install minecraft mod packs i hope this video is useful to you in some kind of way if you have any questions or if you're stuck in anything do leave a comment in the comment section below i'd love to help you guys out i'll try my best to answer all your questions as soon as possible but i can tell if you're subscribed or not so make sure to subscribe if you want to get an answer to a question because that'll let me know do you actually like the video and you're supporting the channel now of course this works with any mod pack not just rl craft mainly just use that one as an example but if you've been watching the top 10 mod packs videos and you want to join in on the fun this is how you can install them and start playing so make sure to like the video and subscribe and i'll catch you next time <laughs>